America's earliest surviving secular composition is My Days Have Been So Wondrous Free, written by Francis Hopkinson in 1759. Francis Hopkinson. Francis Hopkinson. Francis Hopkinson. Francis Hopkinson was born October 2nd, 1737 in Philadelphia. His father was a very good friend of Benjamin Franklin as they had similar tastes and similar philosophies. Unfortunately, Francis's father died when he was just 14 years old, leaving only Francis's mother to raise the family. But Mrs. Hopkinson was a very smart lady and well qualified to educate her children. She decided to make every sacrifice and do everything within her power to give him a good education. Her income was limited, but she was able to get what she needed. Mrs. Hopkinson was an excellent example to her children and her efforts were rewarded with success. She lived to see Francis graduate and become a prominent lawyer. Francis was a very talented man and he stood out among his peers for his intellect. He had a talent for understanding the depths of science almost effortlessly. But he also excelled in music and poetry and dabbled a little bit in painting. In 1766, Francis left for England in an attempt to establish himself as a commissioner for customs for America. After about two years in London, he returned back home without having received that appointment to his dream job. But he quickly laid down his roots and he got married to Anne Borden and settled in Philadelphia for a few years. Finally, his talents were noticed by the royal government and he was offered his dream job in customs. But Francis found that he couldn't in good conscience accept the position though and chose to align himself with the revolutionary patriots by joining the Continental Congress in June of 1776, just in time for the important vote. Francis Hopkinson signed the Declaration of Independence on the 4th of July, 1776, at the age of 38. Shortly after the adoption of the Federalist Constitution, George Washington appointed Mr. Hopkinson to the office of Judge of the United States for the District of Pennsylvania. This was an important and a dignified station for which he was perfectly suited. He was particularly useful in rallying support during the Revolutionary War. And the main way that he accomplished this was with his pamphlets and essays written with satire and art and poetry and music, which were all very skillfully created. These works made Francis quite popular in his day and they still remain quite enjoyable even today. His poetic writings were meant to be amusing to the reader and they were all pretty popular throughout the colonies as well. His most popular one was, the Battle of the Cakes, which taunts the British. And the next most popular one is one entitled A Pretty Story, which examines the relationship between Britain and the colonies. Francis served in this role until his death, May 9th, 1791, when he suffered from internal bleeding at the age of 53. Although his time may have been cut short, Francis's works still live on today. Charles Augustus Goodrich writes of Francis Hopkinson. In his stature, Mr. Hopkinson was below the common size. His countenance was extremely animated, though his features were small. In speech, he was fluent and in his motions unusually quick. Few men were kinder in their dispositions or more benevolent in their lives. He was distinguished for his powers of taste and for his love and devotion to science. Let me tell you about the Battle of the Cakes. It was a propaganda ballad written by Francis Hopkinson describing an attempted attack on the British fleet in the harbor of Philadelphia on January 6, 1778 during the American Revolutionary War. These kegs themselves were filled with gunpowder and were released to float down the Delaware River. It was hoped that they would come in contact with the warships along the riverfront and explode as river mines. 
As the floating mines moved down the river, however, very few of them contacted the ships of the British Navy because the British had hauled their ships into a position that protected them from floating river ice and thus also protected them from these exploding kegs. Well, the operation did not achieve its strategic results and the attack was ineffectual, but A plus for effort. The end.